Hello guys, in this quick video, I want to explain about uh, the classification of uh, ulcerative colitis by the disease extent. So I'm going to discuss about the Montreal classification that is mainly based on the endoscopic findings. So based on the disease extent in ulcerative proctitis E1, left-sided ulcerative colitis E2, extensive ulcerative colitis E3 like this we need to discuss. So let me discuss one by one very quickly. In ulcerative proctitis, which is called as E1, the inflammatory process is confined only to the rectum. So the patients frequently present with rectal bleeding, urgency, tenesmus due to concentrated inflammation in the distal most segment of the colon. This form can often be managed with topical therapies like suppositories or enemas targeting the rectum. Second one is the in left sided ulcerative colitis we call it as E2. In this the disease extends from the rectum proximally but remains limited to the descending colon and does not surpass the splenic flexure. So individuals often experience bloody diarrhea, left lower quadrant abdominal pain and mucus discharge. Therapeutic approaches may include oral and uh, topical formulations like uh, mesalamine with uh, escalation to corticosteroids or immunomodulators for moderate to severe cases. And last one is the extensive ulcerative colitis, we call it as E3. In this, inflammation goes beyond the splenic flexure and can involve transverse colon, ascending colon and sometimes entire colon. That is the reason we call it as pancolitis. So patients may exhibit more widespread symptoms including more frequent bowel movements, significant abdominal pain and a higher risk of systemic complications. So the therapeutic uh, regimen can range from high dose corticosteroids for acute flares to immunomodulatory agents and biologic for the long term control especially if the disease is more severe or recurrent in nature. So this is what we need to know about E1, E2 and E3.